Call the meeting to order. Here, can we get a roll call? Dan. Here. Mike. Here. Jim. Here. Jim. Here. Amy. Here. Gary Finley. Nathan. Here. Okay. Um, everybody had an opportunity to read the minutes. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve the minutes as written. Second. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Uh, the plant report. Um, for June, uh, capacity was at 90 percent, and uh, BODs were good, TSS was good, and ammonia <coughs> is still high. Okay. Um, 90 percent. Sorry. 90 percent of. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, The uh, plan, the financial statements. Any questions on the financial statements? I make a motion that we approve the financial statement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, approval of the claims. I'll make a motion and we approve the claims. Got a motion for the claims, approval of the claims. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Moving on, sewer ban notice. Michael. Um, as you know, we're under the uh, <clears throat> enforcement for the uh, sewer ban warning, and we're also under uh, notice for uh, the high ammonia. Uh, we don't have to do anything at this time, but at some point we'll have to sit down with high and, and uh, get it figured out at some point. But we're basically waiting for them to notify us. Dan, I just want to add that uh, once we get this settled, I think uh, Jim McGough offered to help with any issues on uh, that early warning band. I just want to mention that while we're. Okay. Jim McGough is uh, president of IFA, and if we as we work through things, knowing that we're moving forward, he, he can help us out taking care of that side as well. Maybe uh, keep us out of trouble with good and faith that we're moving forward. Thanks, guys. But uh, we have received the second letter, so we're at a point where we have to do something. Yeah, they, they just want to see us Any other questions on the sewer ban? All right, hearing none. Um, Sugar Creek. Um, Pete, would you like to start? Well, we've negotiated an agreement with Ann and others, and we've signed it. I have it here. Very much. The details should be exactly what you presented at the last meeting, the offer that you approved for Dan to make to us. 
with some minor typo changes and clarifications that Ann asked for and um, should meet and satisfy all those last minute changes. So we believe that uh, should allow you to give the action plan that Mr. McGough referenced that then could show you're moving forward. And, and then we can engage the engineering folks and move quickly. Board members, I, the document I sent, I believe is correct. There was a quotation, there was a, a word flow or rate. Uh, there were two or three true tiny uh, issues. So, and all this signed copy shows is some underlining where those okay. corrections were made. So it shows exactly what the agreement is. Okay. You have seen it yes. signed. So, Again, thank you very much. Thank you. So yeah. the board now needs to officially take action again to ratify it. I mean, you approved that offer, yes. but the board needs to sign it tonight. So you okay. can take action to ratify it and then pass a copy along for your signature so we have a fully executed copy. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the Sugar Creek contract? I make a motion that we approve the contract as submitted by the Sugar Creek. I'll second. All right, let's do a uh, roll call vote. In just a yeah, second. Right that fast. In just a <laughs> second. <laughs> okay, Dan? Yes. Mike? Yes. I vote yes. Jim? Yes. Amy? Yes. Nathan? Yes. All right. It's passed. Great deal. Thank you. It is. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, if that's okay with you. For sure. Yeah. I think we will uh, stick around afterwards and uh, we will answer some questions for the paper if you'll recall there's one more agreement not sugar creek one more agreement i didn't want pete to get too nervous there um, <laughs> one more agreement um, but that is an agreement with the county um, I think, in all fairness, the county's attorney kind of sat back while we were finalizing um, with Sugar Creek. I saw an early draft from the county. I gave very limited feedback to that draft. And so I just need to see that agreement finalized so you can likewise finalize the agreement with the county. That's, that's fine. We're, uh thrilled to death uh, that uh, two parties have finally got there after many, many, many years of work and uh, we're anxiously awaiting to uh, receive a copy of the signed agreement. Uh, as soon as we uh, receive that, uh, Ron Cross, the county attorney, will prepare an interlocal agreement between us and Western Wayne Sewer. We'll get that done uh, very quickly here and get that to uh, Ann and to you, Dan, so that we can move forward on that and get that resolved and uh, complete that and eventually get those dollars here to you. Okay. He's already prepared it, as I said, some time ago, and I gave him some very limited feedback, so I think it just needs to be finalized and make sure that the commissioners have approved it. Great. Okay. Thank you both. Um, moving on from that, then uh, everything's downhill from there. Um, <laughs> Marty, Wessler Engineer. Are you guys ready to talk about getting going on the engineering? We've been waiting on you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you want to take? How much time do you need? Um, I uh, 
tab uh, page in the back, um, which you'll notice is dog ear. And this is really the scope of work for the plant, for the plant expansion, and what we would be doing. And so, as you can see, it would be um, a design average flow of 1.8 million gallons a day. The plant would be designed for, with a peak hourly flow that can handle up to 4.8 million gallons a day. Um, Influent average CPUD 5 of 300 and suspended solids of 300 and I'm sure Gary and Bridget will work the ammonia numbers out with you. But this new plant will be designed to treat ammonia so you won't have the issues that we've had with the bio lab. Um, raw sewage pump station. Um, Influent raw sewage pump station. Uh, there is a um, um, we would, as part of the PER amendment, evaluate reuse and modification of the existing raw sewage pump station. And the previous design, we were going to reuse some of the parts of it. With this, Gary is not sure that the existing pump station um, structure is large enough for to handle the higher flows and everything. So we're gonna determine if it's feasible to reuse that or to build a new one. So the cost estimate that we had given, um, the construction cost was 16.5 million and the total of all the non-construction costs was 2.8 million. So in that construction cost, he had budgeted for a new one. If we can, if it's feasible to reuse the existing and maybe save some money, that's what, what we'll be looking at. That's what Bridget will be working on as part of the PDR. Um, so then it would include a new influence structure with a grit removal, new fine screen. Um, fine screen would be indoors, um, so you don't have to deal with uh, freezing and all the inclement weather. Um, concrete foundation with a, a room and everything. Uh, biological treatment. We would do an anaerobic selector tank so that you would be set up to do phosphorus removal uh, biologically and, and would use less chemical um, than you would without the biological phosphorus removal. And then we would have either two or three new vertical loop reactor tanks. So base-wise, we can stick with the VLRs that we previously designed but they also um, would like to look at a bio loop oxidation dish system because we're finding that those are about the same cost or possibly a little bit less expensive, but they also give you the added benefit of um, energy savings because they would use mixers in conjunction with the aeration. And then you, when you have plenty of air, you can turn, keep the mixers going and then sh shave your energy costs by turning your blowers down. So it, it's, just a, it's just an added benefit to the bio loop. So, they want to take a look at that, and then obviously, as we had before, new blowers. You'd have new secondary clarifiers. These are the same as the 1.2 million gallon day plant. They're just larger diameter to handle larger flows. Um, new effluent structure, again, sticking with UV disinfection, and uh, new uh, effluent flow meter, new effluent sewer and outfall that can convey the larger flows. Uh, we would demolish the existing biolac basin after the new tanks are built and up and running. And then going to put new three new aerobic digesters in the area where the biolac basin is now. Um, then demolish the existing aerobic digesters. Uh, we would uh, have a new sludge dewatering building and sludge storage. Um, evaluate if you would be able to rehab the existing belt press because that is now close to 30 years old. Sometimes you can pull them out and totally refurbish them to almost as good as new for less than getting a new one. So that's one of the things we want to look at doing if, if we can do that. Um, and then also if it would have the capacity to handle larger flows and higher solids uh, amounts. Um, if that's not feasible, we would uh, look at putting a new uh, belt press or maybe a centrifuge in, depending on which one was 
um, better long term for you guys. Marty, did that? Did they quote include a new belt? Yeah. Okay. So the yeah the estimated construction cost was saying to build a new one. Okay. Marty, I'd definitely like to talk a little more about that belt and maybe uh, not purchasing new. Maybe we can find some someplace else. Okay. Um, a new two bay maintenance garage. Um, liquid sludge loading station, which you'll need to keep. Uh, new electrical and chemical feed building. Uh, we will make modifications to the existing influent control building. Uh, we have modified the existing grit and blower building. Um, make modifications to the existing lab and sludge handling building. And um, basically demolishing, move, taking the belt filter press and everything out of where it is now and opening that area up and then making improvements to your lab area for increased testing and kind of larger plant size. Um, we'll be doing that. And then just miscellaneous work. You need a new emergency generator, automatic transfer switch, uh, electrical, new uh, plant-wide SCADA system for automation. Um, and then you've got your site demolition, your yard piping and valves and so on. And then also then a new West Plant Drive entrance off of the extension of Plum Street. Coming in. If you just just imagine keep going south on Plum Street and then come in on the south side of the plant, that's that would be, then be the new entrance which would make it easier to get in and out through your larger trucks and things. Will we have enough uh, land for a biological ditch? <laughs> Yes. So that is a, a summary of the scope of work. Um, this agreement uh, would include all of our services to um, basic engineering services would be a full amendment to the SRF preliminary engineering report. Um, so that we would, we would work on that and then obviously we've got to get that um, approved. We've already talked with SRF and they are um, agreeable to do this as an amendment to the existing PER rather than starting new and doing a whole new PER. So that's saving a little bit. So we would do that. We would then move into the design phase and we would design, do all the plans and specifications um, for the, the plant um, like we did before. Uh, we will be able to reuse um, a little over half of what we did before. Um, going to a, a larger plant size means our pipes have to be larger. We have to do new calculations for how much flow and what size pipes those need to be and everything else. So that's kind of, we, we've got to go through and re-engineer it. All the electrical, we've got to go back through and resize because you have new larger motors, larger, and you know, more electrical load, now that changes all of our wiring and our conduit size and everything else. Same thing with buildings and HVAC, so plumbing and, and those types of things. So um, as we did before, right, this would take us all the way through the bid phase. Um, and then uh, we would get, um, after it's all done, and upon then, and, and you'll see as I start on page four in the bid phase, you'll see up top we say, upon authorization by the owner to proceed. So basically what we're saying is right now, even though we're asking you to approve all of our services, after today we'll get going on the PER amendment and we'll get going on the design. And we'll provide updates and we'll work with Michael on it. But you won't approve us to proceed with anything past that without us being in front of you and asking for permission to move toward, like for the bid phase. So that's, that's one of the things I want to point out is even though this is going to seem like a really big contract with a really big number, um, which is still a lot less than the budget we had put in, um, you're going to have to, we're going to come to you and ask for approval to, to go to each next phase. Um, permitting assistance, um, we're going to have to go back to DNR and get a new permit. We're going to have to go back to IDEM and get a new permit. Um, DNR, we've pre-filed with them because they are running anywhere from six to 12 months to get construction and floodway permits right now. And 
So, so we, we took it upon ourselves to pre-file with them um, just to get that, that ball rolling. Um, programming services would be the programming services for the wastewater plant SCADA. Uh, you'll be putting in a whole new SCADA system, computer controls and things, and so we would be working with Michael then to do the programming, figure out the screens, what you're going to want to see on the screens, and, and everything else with that. Uh, we've got several control systems engineers that, that do all that. Um, and then construction phase, um, after um, we receive bids, and you know, if bids, bids come in like they did before, um, we'll be good to go, right? Um, and then after you accept the bids, then we would help you get SRF approval. We'd work with Buzz and Ann and the Bond Council on whatever is needed to go to closing, close on your bonds. And then we would go through and do all the construction phase services, um, which are quite extensive. Um, and then it takes like four pages to go through all the construction services. And then after construction and during construction, um, on page nine, we get to the operational support and assistance with the startup training and the O&M manuals. Uh, because he's going to have brand new O&M manuals, brand new equipment, and your operators are going to need to know how to run it. We will have, of all the equipment that we have specified and designed and the contractor puts in, those manufacturers are going to come in and do, we're going to require them to do startup, right? And, and train you on how to do it. We're assembling all the manuals and writing an O&M manual so that, you know, if, if something happens, if you have change in personnel over the years, you've always got an, a written O&M manual that they can go to and say, this is how you need to run the plant. Will this also include the state's asset list that will be required? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, with a with a brand new plant, we will have all the assets for the asset inventory for the asset management plan, which you'll have to yeah. check the box um, by the time you have your last draw. And so we uh, will do that, and then warranty assistance. So after the plant is substantially complete and up and running and treating all the flow, we'll have the contractor provide a one-year warranty. So that if anything goes wrong, you know, Michael will just call Bridget or Gary or whoever, and then we'll come out and we'll make sure the contractor or the manufacturers resolve things while it's under warranty. And then, um, similar to the previous contract, which I'm trying to think, um, so our previous contract, Mike, I think you were, you were here when we did the previous one, Jim, and probably Gary. Um, but we haven't been through a contract with you, Amy, or Dan, or, or uh, Nathan, so um, these are additional services, but these would all be additional services that would require your written authorization. So then if we get into something and we say um, that that's really not in the scope of services of this, but you know, you come and say, we want you to go look at this, or we want to, maybe we want to break this project apart, and have two different contractors or something like that, that's that's not planned for right now. So those would be uh, something that would be additional services. Um, and so those, but those would be, um, those would require your authorization. So if those were, you know, we would come to you and say, these are, um, this is why we believe it's an additional service. And we would request your authorization. So then we get all the way back um, um, to page 13. And we get to the fun stuff is the compensation. So um, as we go through the compensation, if you guys don't mind me reading it out loud, for it um, would be a lump sum fee for the PER amendment in the design phase would be $650,000. As I told Dan, if we were to design this plant from scratch, like if we would have started instead of doing the 1.2 and we were just saying from scratch for a $16 million plant, our fee would have been about 1.3 to 1.35. So what we've, what we've done here is basically said, we're gonna 
give about a $700,000 credit based upon the work we previously completed for the $1.2 million gallon they plan. Um, bid phase would be $60,000, and then the programming services would be $150,000. And then the other ones would be um, hourly, but we also have a not to exceed. Um, so permitting assistance, um, as we did before in the previous contract, would be hourly. Um, that is, so if we apply for the permit with DNR and they come back and then they require us to go do more work that wasn't planned on, then that, you know, that we can't control what they're going to request. Um, construction administration and RPR, just like um, what we've done on the lift station, those are hourly type contracts because you know, if we get a really good contractor, then you're you're not going to see as much time on our part because the they you know we're we're good there. Um, and then operation support and assistance um, would be ninety five thousand and O and M manuals, start and training, and then warranty assistance, which is be a budget of fifteen grand. Um, so then, as you see, the total fee of $2,170,000 shall not be exceeded without the written approval of, of the owner. So some of it's lump sum, and that's a, that's a fixed, that's a set fee, and then the others are hourly with, with an estimated fee. We're saying all in, it won't exceed that 2.17. And for reference, the rate study and everything is budgeted, you have $2.8 million in your total non-construction cost. So this is leaving an extra 600,000 for all the other fees and all the other non or the all the other professional fees. And if you have additional closing costs or things like that. Or it just gives you some contingency uh, against other stuff. Uh, the compensation then were anticipated construction services a uh, construction contract period of 22 months, so almost two years, um, and we would work within that budget. Um, if the construction period is extended, um, that compensation may need to be increased, but it may not be because it's, it all depends upon, it's an hourly type budget. And so you would get our monthly invoices and we document for all the hourly parts these are, these are who worked on it this month, and these are all the hours they spent. We do the detailed billing. We've done that for the, the lift station project. We did that on the other project. And then we also noted that based upon our correspondence and our talks with IDEM, we're not going to need to do an anti-degradation demonstration. So we, we should not need to do that. Um, schedule. Draft DER amendment would be submitted to you within 60 days. Um, followed within, then we'd have a review meeting with you. And then after that, um, we would submit the final PER amendment. And we would have to, talking with SRF, we'd have to have another public hearing to go through that, like we did the public hearing before. So that public hearing then would be to present the uh, PER amendment to the public and go from there. Um, design phase, we have set it up in uh, three separate intervals, roughly 30%, 60%, and 90%. Um, and so what we're saying is um, we would have the 90% design drawings and specs to you within 210 calendar days, so basically seven months. Um, then we would have the final design documents committed, completed and submitted to you after within 60 days after your review and comments. So every step along the way, like 30%, we would have a 30% design meeting. Sit down and go through it all, you know, page by page, and go through. And then we go from 60, 30 to 60, and 60%, we do the same thing. So we, and then also at 90. So then we would submit the permit application within 10 days following that, when we're 90% that's that's usually IDEM is accepting of saying that's completed, you know, go ahead and submit it to us for for our, your construction permit. So that's when we would anticipate. So we would anticipate about seven months from now 
we would be in a position that we can submit to IDEM for permits. And DNR and, and Wayne County and <laughs> there's a litany of permits for that. Um, programming services, we would start on the design of the SCADA software during the design phase, and then really the programming then occurs during construction phase as we're moving along with construction. Because then we're getting the shop drawings from the contractor and all the equipment and all the electrical shop drawings, and so we've got all the IOs and everything else. If you know electrical, that, that's about as much as I know. Um, IO and fault checkouts and things like that. So um, the programming goes through basically the, the life of the project. Um, construction phase, I said we'd be looking at uh, construction contract time in 22 months to final completion. And then we typically would provide construction administration services for you know the additional time required to get all the close out, documentation, and things like that. Record drawings, provide the as-built drawings and everything else. Um, operational support and assistance, um, as we, you know, that, that goes through the project and um, will continue after project construction completion for up to six months. Because it's, it's going to take a little while to work the bugs out, right? <laughs> um, and then warranty of period assistance, as I said, is, is 12 months following the substantial completion. And then our attachments are um, standard terms conditions, which are exactly the same as what we've had in the previous contracts. Um, our hourly rate schedule for the hourly portions. Um, attachment three is the scope of work, which we walked through. Attachment four is our E-Verify affidavit. Attachment five is our Indiana Iran investment certification, certifying that we do not investment activities with our end. And then attachment number six is the duties, responsibilities, and limits of authority of the resident project representative, which is the same document as what we've used um, on past projects, what we use on the lift station project. standard you know forgive me engineers are not particularly um, <laughs> creative in their contracts um, they tend to use forms um, and so it is standard from that side I don't mean that disrespectfully um, but yes to the extent that you wish to get the project moving and use Wessler services and agree with those prices, then yes, that contract is just fine. Thank you. What do you want? Do we want some time for everybody to take it home, read it, or do you, how do you, what I'm doing with this? Yeah. I think we make a motion. I'm ready to think it out. I'm ready to vote based on our recommendation. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion we sign the contract with Whistlers as written. Do I have a second? I have a second. We get a roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Mike? Yes. Hello, yes. Jim? Yes, sir. Amy? Yes. Nathan? Yes. Okay. For the record, I don't know why it took so long, Marty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have some single
Um, now that we have that, Ken has already spoke and updated us for the county and where we stand on that contract, which is moving along. Um, I think with that we're ready any new business. Hearing none. I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone.